Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a cantilever overhang design. So uh, we're going to get straight to the problem statement on this one, and then we'll kind of walk through the different uh, components that we're going to look at. So let's assume we have a, a cantilever here. Um, this could be like a storefront overhang or something like that. Um, so we've got like an HSS uh, uh, beam there uh, that's welded to a, plate, a base plate, and then that base plate is going to be bolted back to the structure framing. So we're going to be looking at the member design, right? So we'll be using chapter F and G for flexure and shear. We'll assume it's an HSS four by four by one quarter, and it's four feet long. Our weld design will be in accordance with chapter J, and then also the, utilizing the Blodgett method. We'll assume a quarter inch fillet all around and using our E70 electrodes. Our bolted design will be also in accordance with chapter J, and we'll be assuming four one half inch A325N bolts, um, and that'll be an eight inch square bolt pattern. And our loading is going to be LRFD, and we're going to assume that we have a dead load of 1.5 kips uh, all the way at the end of the cantilever, and then we'll also include the self weight of the HSS member. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, I've got CalcBook open now, so let's go ahead and open our steel design. We'll go ahead and use the 15th edition, and we're going to start with the member design. So we have this HSS beam, right, that's cantilevered out. So we're going to look at our flexure design, and we're also going to look at our shear design. Um, no axial, and we're not going to worry about any uh, biaxial bend or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and select our HSS, and then we will go down and find our HSS 4 by 4 by quarter right there. And then we'll go ahead and jump into our beam loading tab, right? So our total length of the beam is going to be 4 feet. Uh, for the shear location, right, it's going to be at 0. It's going to be at that left fixed edge. Um, same with the moment, and then our deflection would be all the way at 4 feet at the end. So we need to update our boundary condition, right? We have a fixed free condition. So we can see here we've got fixed on the left end and then free on the right end there. Uh, our self weight is already loaded up, so we're just going to go ahead and add in our point load of 1.5 kips, and that's going to be a dead load, and that's going to be at 4 feet from the end. So we've got our shear diagram, right, flat shear diagram, and then our sloped moment diagram, and then our deflection diagram as well. So we want to uh, first here take note of a few things, um, right, this will help come into play when we do the weld and bolt design. So First thing, right, we want to look at is our controlling load combination is just going to be 1.4 dead. So our, uh, our factored shear load at the face is going to be 2.17 kips. And then our factored moment at the face is going to be 8.54 kip feet. And that is uh, good enough for us for what we're going to need for the bolted and welded design. So we just want to take note of that from our moment diagrams for our reactions um, so that we can use that when we get to our connection design. So. We can go ahead and jump into our major axis uh, flexure design, right? Our unbraced length is just going to be the 4 feet long, and we are good. We have plenty of capacity here. We're at 0.53 DCR ratio, so plenty of capacity on the bending, and then I assume also plenty of capacity on the shear. So our member design checks out. We could reduce the size and maybe reduce the wall thickness a little bit if we wanted to optimize, uh, but we can leave that as is for an HSS 4x4. Um, we've gone into detail on these designs before, so we're not going to go into detail there, but we are good to go on our member design. So let's go ahead and go back to our main screen here. We'll click into the connection design. We're going to do our welded connection, and we have a welded rectangle. So get that loaded up. Right, Our width of weld is just going to be 4 inches by 4 inches because we're using an HSS 4x4. We're going to start with a quarter inch weld and see if that is sufficient. Our demand on this weld, right? we already have our reactions fully factored, so we can just go and toggle this to none. So our vertical load in the y direction that's going to be the 2.17 kips. And then our moment about the X, right? That's just our moment reaction at the face there. Um, and so we'll go down to here at moment X, and that's going to be 8.54 kip feet. So that gives us a DC ratio of 0 0.86. Right, and again, we've gone into detail before on other videos uh, about how we calculate that. Um, you know, looking at the weld section properties, um, getting all of our forces in a uh, per unit uh, per unit length uh, uh, demand, and then we calculate the total resultant stresses, and then our capacity of that fillet weld. So, not going to jump into too much detail here, uh, but we are good to go with a quarter inch fillet. We might be able to reduce that down to a three sixteenths, but we're going to leave it at a quarter for now. So then, the last thing we need to check is our bolted connection. 
So we'll go back to our main design module selection here. And we're just going to do a single bolt check. Um, and so we'll have to do a little bit of math here to get the demand on one of our bolts. Um, but first, let's change this to a one half inch bolt. And we can just double check here. We had an A325, uh, not excluded. So we have 90 and 54 KSI for our tensile and shear strengths. And that's already loaded up, so we're good to go there. Um, our demand, right, again, we already have our factored load, so we'll just switch that to, uh, to none. So our shear demand is just going to be the 2.17 kips, right, divided by 4 bolts. So that's going to be 0.5425 uh, kips. And then our tension demand, right, so we have our moment, which is 8.54 kip feet. And then we're going to divide that by the distance between the upper row and the bottom row, which we said was 8 inches. So we'll do 8 inches, and we'll just convert that, um, divided by 12. And that gives us 12.81 kips, right, positive and negative, uh, tension compression top and bottom. And then we'll divide that by 2, since we have uh, 2 bolts top and bottom. And that gives us a tensile demand of 6.405 uh, kips. So that gives us a DC ratio of 0 0.48, so we are good there as well. And again, uh, we've been through this calculation in detail, and um, it just calculates the capacity of the tension and the shear in the bolts and gives us that combined effect uh, of the total bolt capacity. So that is a sort of multi-component design there in CalcBook um, for a cantilevered uh, HSS attached with a weld and bolted connection. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you have suggestions or uh, comments on the video, please let us know in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you next time.